Hey folks, welcome to MakerQuest. In this episode, I'm going to give you an overview of the four fundamental physical forces in nature, and we'll talk about um, atoms and basically like give you a quick understanding of the of the laws of the universe and how that constrains um, atoms, but also like lets them do really really cool things. Um, okay, so here we go. There are four fundamental forces. There are three atomic forces. Basically, that means there are three forces that govern the way that uh, particles move or atoms move. Um, and then you have gravity, which is on big scales. So the atomic forces are really, really, really tiny scales. Um, so they're really small in space and in time. So they happen very small distances, really, really quick, like faster than a computer can do calculations. Um, and gravity is on the completely other end of the spectrum. So gravity happens over really big distances, um, over very, very long periods of time. But what I find really fascinating is that all of the forces kind of behave in very similar ways even though they appear to be different, um, different things. Um, and actually, the three atomic forces have effectively been combined into one force. So the outlier now is gravity. Um, but assuming, you know, humans keep studying science, we'll figure it out eventually. So we'll start with the three atomic forces. You have the strong force. Strong. And the reason why we call that the strong force is because it's super strong, but only on teeny, 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 tiny scales. And by tiny scales, I mean like literally less than the size of an atom. The strong force is what holds the nucleus of the atom together. Um, basically, it's the force between uh, quarks that bind protons and neutrons together. So in an whoopsies, my chalk is getting teeny tiny. In a nucleus, you have protons and neutrons. Um, protons are positively charged, neutrons are neutral, um, and those are made out of quarks. And the force that binds those particles together is the strong force. But as soon as you have a proton farther away from the atom, it's not really going to care about these. But if you get it close uh, to one of these atomic particles, it will be sucked in. All right, so after the strong force, or its strong nuclear force, you have the weak uh -oh, nuclear force. The weak force is responsible for particle decay. Um, and basically the reason why that happens is because these, uh, this force, the force carriers have mass. So when it, these, when this force interacts with, um, different particles, the, basically you're going to lose some, you're going to lose some energy that's going to be carried away by this force. Um, so the reason why particles decay is because of the weak nuclear force. Um, and then after that, Oh, and I should say, you probably figured this out, but it's called the weak force because it's weaker than the strong force. Um, so the strong force happens on the teeniest of tiny scales. The weak force is slightly above that. And then you have the electromagnetic force. Um, and so this is probably the one that we're most familiar with. So the electromagnetic force is what governs charges um, as well as magnets. Um, effectively, they're different manifestations of the same thing. Um, I'm going to talk about this one in more depth because I think that helps us to understand the other forces. So basically, for a really long time, scientists thought that magnetism and electricity were totally separate. And then some brilliant folks were like, oh, wait, a moving electric field or a moving electric charge creates a magnetic field and vice versa. Oh my gosh. So they're actually the same thing. So this was the first 
force that was thought to be different that was then merged together because scientists realized like, oh, if we just do these experiments in different ways, we can see how these two things interact. And so really we can say that it's the same thing. Um, and what has happened over the decades, um, almost, almost, I guess, yeah, you could say a century now at this point. Um, basically, uh, it's been shown that the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force are different manifestations of the same thing. And then, uh, the tricky piece was showing that the weak nuclear force and the electromagnetic force were different manifestations of the same thing. And this is where the Higgs comes in. So basically what physicists do, um, what theoretical physicists do is they use mathematics to um, try and describe the laws of physics um, in different ways. And so the theoretical physic physicists are on are you know on their chalkboards and pieces of paper and computers doing really complex calculations, um, trying to say okay we know that this is what reality looks like let me try and write some equations that match reality and sometimes they get some really weird predictions sometimes those predictions are reasonable and sometimes are totally far fetched um, but basically um, after the theoretical physicists come up with a proposal. Um, they find an, an equation that fits reality, that makes some sense with the things that we know to be true. Um, then the experimental physicists come in and they're like, all right, here I am. I'm going to test your theory and see if it is actually true. Um, because you can't just have an equation and say, this is true. You must also um, provide evidence for that theory. So there, are, the experimentalists um, will spend, you know, years, um, if not generations, working on uh, different detectors and different experiments to try and confirm the predictions of the theoretical physicists. That's exactly what happened with the Higgs boson. I have a whole nother video on that, so I won't go into that in super um, detail. But basically, these three forces have been merged. Um, and uh, this, basically the, the merging is the standard model. Um, you can't totally see it when I'm writing here, so I'll move a little bit. So standard model. And the standard model is, you can kind of think about it like the periodic table of elements for particle physics. Um, the standard model describes what happens on really, really small scales. So that's where quantum mechanics lives. Um, quantum mechanics, super interesting. I'll do another video on that because there's a million things to say about that. There's no way I could cover all of this in one video. Um, but yeah, so the standard model describes atomic forces. Um, and then you have gravity. Dun, dun, dun. So gravity is totally weird because gravity is kind of the outlier. Um, and gravity is where Einstein comes in. So we'll just say relativity. Um, general and special relativity. Um, and so the standard model and relativity have held up for about the same amount of time. They rigorously, you know, they've been tested, they've been, um, different pieces have been proven, uh, to exist. And, uh, the, a lot of findings or a lot of predictions made by these two models have been have been discovered which is amazing because it just blows my mind that a theoretical physicist someone like einstein um can sit down and use math to make these crazy predictions like black holes and then the experimentalists come along and they're, and they're like oh yeah totally we found exactly what you predicted um that doesn't always happen of course um, but basically, uh, right now we have the standard model and, and gravity and they don't match at all. And so folks are trying to figure out, well, folks, <laughs> physicists are trying to figure out, um, what is the missing piece of the puzzle? Um, so yeah, that's really interesting. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there for now because that was a decent amount of information. I will save, um, the structure of atoms for the next video. So please let me know if you have any questions on the four fundamental forces. Strong nuclear force, weak nuclear force, electromagnetic force, technically all the same force, just different manifestations. 
And then you have gravity. <gasps> dun dun dun! The universe is so magical and beautiful! Alright, I um, will see you next time, and of course, please let me know if you have any questions.